your coming summer of a blackout. Sponsored by Sniffy Joe and his master, Obama. Uh, this is going to get ugly. And I just, it's going to be, it's, it's by design. The grid monitors say two-thirds of the U.S. risk electricity outages. So let's check this out. So here's from the North American Electric, Electric Reliability Corporation, NERC. There's some reliability assessment forecast that no less than two-thirds of the U.S., including most everyone west of the Mississippi, could experience power outages this summer. Texas and most of the Midwest should have enough power to meet demand, assuming they don't experience any sizzling hot and still summer days, still because of no wind. Last summer, Texas narrowly averted a powder outage by leaning on, on businesses to conter, curtail operations. The state has since added another 200 uh, power to solar to power about 200,000 200, homes. Wow. Enough solar to power 200,000 homes. But demand has grown by even more. And the sun doesn't shun at night. NERC forecasts a 19% probability of a grid emergency in Texas at 8 p.m. We still need the we still need electricity because why? Oh, it's nice to have air conditioning in Texas. One new variable this summer is the EPA's re recently finalized Good Neighbor Plan, which requires fossil fuel plants in 22 states to reduce NOx, which I nitrous oxide. I'm sure. Uh, if I'm not, I'm sure CO2 is carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide. We got uh, the big one, of course, is water vapor for greenhouse gases, methane. So methane. CO2 is a green, we got water vapor, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, methane. There's another one that's real small. I think I'm losing. I forgot what it is. NERC predicts power plants will comply by limiting hours of operation, but warns they may, they may need regulatory waivers in the event of a power crunch. The EPA claimed the rule wouldn't jeopardize the grid. But then why would we need waivers, regulatory waivers, if blackouts are coming? Another growing concern is glitchy solar plant inverters, which converts DC to AC power, direct current to alternating current. These have caused solar plants in California and Texas to experience concurrent outages when there has been a problem somewhere else on the grid. Solar plants have exhibited systemic performance issues, says NERC. Faulty inverters can amplify minor grid problems and trigger widespread power outages. Speaking of the sun, California's grid is po poised to weather this summer better than last year, only to more abun abundant hydropower because of winter storms. But remember, they voted against one of their hydropowers, and I think it was San Diego, I can't remember, because it hurts the environment. Hydro is not big green. Hydro hurts the environment. Just ask the environmentalists. Ask them about hydro. They don't like environmental. So how are we relying still on hydro because we had a big summer, we had a big uh, winter snowstorm in California? If neighboring states, though, uh, however, if there's a heat wave, California would need to import more power from other states than it already does. And the sun goes down. If neighboring states are strapped, too, for instance, because the EPA won't let them run coal plants, California could be stuck. Better buy an emergency generator while stores still have them, which is powered by fossil fuels. I mean, you can buy one of these rinky-dinky you know, solar uh, batteries, which I have. I like it. It's not going to do much, but, you know, run a fan. You know, get enough uh, batteries and enough solar, you can run a friggin' uh, air conditioning. But you're not going to run a society on this, dude. It's not happening. You're not, there's not enough battery power in the world to run our society. Never mind a growing society. It's just, it's, it's a fake, it's fake news. People think this. The NERC report is an alarm about the Biden administration and states moving full speed ahead on the green energy transition. Maybe when the power goes down, they'll stop hitting the snooze button. Uh, let's see. Uh, one state that hasn't learned from California's green energy folly is New York. A new regulation will force 627 megawatts of gas and oil peaker plants. Peaker plants is when you need reliable electricity. You can flip on a switch and get that sucker revved up to meet your load. You have a growing load, a shrinking generation. You have a peaker plant, which is based on fossil fuels or nuclear. But again, we all hate nuclear, right? Because uh, China Syndrome and Jane Fonda, it's all such a fraud. But they're going to force 627 megawatts of gas and oil peaker plants to shut down this year, which is enough to power 470,000 homes. And of course, they're going to reply, uh, retire all peaker plants by 2030. Dude, this is insane. So I, I, my fifth video I ever did was this guy right here. Why we need domestic steel production. March 5th of 2018, and I only got 115 views. It's been out there for 
This is year six. Why? Because, Josh, you should stick to financial planning. You're not an engineer, an electrical engineer. You're not a nuclear physicist. I don't care. I'm an interested guy. I'm curious. I'm grateful for the abundance that we have. And I know that abundance is based on reliable, cheap electricity and energy. I know that. Where does that reliable, cheap electricity come from? Oh, it's moving the electrons from point A to point B down a copper wire. That's just a fact. So how do you excite the electrons to move? And again, when we, has anyone actually seen an electron? No. And there's some kind of thought, yeah, we've seen one. Eh, okay, maybe. But at the end of the day, is the electron still exist? I don't. Does it actually exist? I don't know. All I know is what I've come to rely on is when we click on that right there, when we turn on the switch, it closes the circuit, which allows light to come from that fan, or light to come and the fan to turn. I, that fan is probably what, a sixteenth of a horsepower, I imagine, because fans don't take a lot of electricity to run. That might be an eighth or something like that. Horsepower is about 770 watts. So if we have uh, an eighth of a horsepower, it's, I guess probably what, 80, 80 watts or something like that, I'm assuming. Uh, you can run that uh, without a lot of electricity. You know, on solar, actually, you can. If you have batteries and you have a solar uh, panel, you can. You're not running a massive array of uh, of air conditions and all this stuff on a solar, just not. Now, can you do it in your own single family unit on rooftop solar? Absolutely. Are you gonna do that for a society as a whole? Absolutely not, it's silly, it's silly to think about. Anyway, the point being is you have a copper wire, what you need to do is you gotta make the electrons, again, if they exist, and no, oh, I'm open, but it's just as one of these things that we've all taken it for granted that these things exist without anyone actually having seen them. Oh, we've got videos, eh, okay. But it'd be that, I mean, I'm not arguing that here right now, I'm just saying, you gotta think a little bit outside the box. So I have an electron in theory that we can we can uh, excite and it runs down this so it bounces to another electron bounces another electron and it just moves around and that movement allows uh, allows electricity generation and you can do the same thing by uh, a hydro you got water up here it comes down off a head is what's called it turns a turbine it excites the generation excites the electrons and it moves electricity from down the wire a copper wire because very conducive all right so basically that's how this works. Solar, so giving, oh, look at that. There's no sun right now. All right, so right now at uh, noon, what time is it? Yes, exactly at noon, overhead in, in North Fulton County, Georgia. There's no sun. If you know how solar works, you recognize the insanity of thinking that solar is going to provide us the uh, uh, limited, the unlimited, reliable, and cheap electricity that we need. It's not going to happen. And just remember, electricity is only about 60 to 70% of the entirety of the energy. When I flew back from Houston to Georgia, that, that was on a plane. How do I get there? Not from electricity. It's from energy via uh, jet fuel, right? That's fossil fuels. That's not on battery packs. It's freaking stupid to think this. I don't get it. People do. It's dumb. Or it's ignorant or it's dumb. So if you watch this video, you no longer are ignorant. And if you still believe that you can fly your plane from Houston to Georgia on batteries, well, that's just dumb, right? Well, they're working on it. Dude, I hear this all the time. And we're still using the vast majority of batteries that still lead asset batteries lead acid batteries from you know, Edison's days. And we have sh shown you videos I've done where Edison was saying, oh my goodness, we're gonna take over the ICE. We don't need any ICEs. This is Thomas Edison, all fake, all fake news. Anyway, so what happens is we gotta excite the electrons uh, with some kind of heating source, essentially. And solar, what it does is, oh, that's what I was gonna say. Solar, what it does, it takes the, the abundant and free uh, sun energy which on average, yeah, probably about 160 watts per meter square on average in the United States. So like right now, if the sun was out and there's no cloud cover, I'd be getting about 180 watts, eh, probably in here in Atlanta, I'd probably get about 800, 900 watts. If the sun was with no cloud cover, because we still got humidity and whatnot, no cloud cover, the sun was overhead, I'd probably on a meter square, I'd probably get 800, 900 watts or something like that. You know, in the brightest day with no cloud cover, no humidity, you're probably getting, what, a, a, a thousand, I think, watts per square meter, 1,100. My math might be a little bit off, but not much. However, you don't get that all the time. In fact, here we are at noon, the cloud cover, I'm not getting that. On average in Atlanta, you're getting about 170 watts per square meter. You know, the sun goes down, you don't get any watts per square meter. So, but, so you take that on average 24-hour uh, time frame. You're getting about 170 watts per square meter in Atlanta, about 220 in L.A., but 140 in Maine. All right, so you're taking that, and then basically what you do is you convert that into electricity via a solar panel, right? Now, a solar panel isn't 100% efficient. In fact, the best solar panels that you can get on the market about 25% efficiency. And they'll never get much more above 35%. It's just basic physics, man. Unless they come up with some significant 
different that physicists haven't yet to even think about. But basic physics says you're never going to get a deficiency in the market for more than about 25%. They've, they've shown 40% solar panels in a lab on a tiny, it's, they're not, it ain't happening. Here. I'm just telling you right now. So anyway, we use 25% efficiency. So for simplicity, if I can turn, uh, I just got, I got to do my 200 watts that the sun is giving me on average, the 25% efficiency, um, I can turn that to electricity. That's about 50 watts per meter square on average. You follow that? So again, for 200 watts per meter square, 25% efficient panel, we can turn that to about 50 watts of electricity. That's per meter square. A meter square is a pretty big space, man. I'm not, it's not like this. A meter square is a pretty big space, all right? Now, that can work. I, all, all four of you getting solar rooftop uh, PV, all for it. That's not going to work in the vast majority of time. A lot of people live in apartments. A lot of people don't have access to south-phasing south phasing sun. A lot of people don't have the money for solar. It's just not going to happen. It's nuts. And then, and on top of that, it's very, very, it takes a lot of space. But even if you had all that, it doesn't matter. You're not going to run an economy that's growing on solar rooftop or even if you take the uh, the desert that California has. It's just not going to happen. And so you got to think, how do we get electricity that's reliable and cheap? It's simple with fossil fuels or nuclear. There's no other way around this, man. But we're going away from fossil fuels because insane people who either they know better and are evil or are ignorant, and we need to educate them, but they don't want to hear it because they just believe the green monstrosity. Or we go to nuclear, which is, there's no CO2 in nuclear. Uranium. Oh, but it's dangerous. You're Jane Fonda. Ugh, the China syndrome. We're all going to die. It's insanity. Something's going to give. So if we're turning away, and we're even turning away from hydro for heaven's sake. So if we're turning away from hydro, we're turning away from uh, fossil fuels. And we're certainly not uh, having abundant nuclear. The only one that's about to open is one here in Georgia. I think it's still three years behind. Where else are you going to get it? Solar and wind? You're freaking nuts, dudes. You're not getting it from solar and wind. So the other, only other thing that's left is a blackout. Rolling blackouts. Rationing of electricity. How people don't get this. So let me show you something else here. And I'll put a link in my show notes uh, for this video right here. I'd, like, I'd encourage you to watch it. Uh, you'll learn something, man. Because I've always taken the thought that if I can dissuade people from being fearful of the real fear, the fear mongers that are out there, the fake ones, retirement planning, we're all going to die. And I can say there is real fear out there, which is lack of a uh, reliable electric grid and get people to wake up to that. That's a win. Now, do I focus a lot on, on, a, on power generation? Not much, but I'm a, I'm a curious guy and I'm self-educated on this. And again, I'm not an electric engineer, but I, I know enough to say, hey, there's a problem here. Raise the freaking red flag or, you know, sound the alarm. We got to fix this problem. And ignorant people won't fix the problem until it's too late. And I don't want to go down with a ship because ignorant people are still vote for the big green deal and whatnot. So anyway, so I'll put a link in the show notes because, you know, I talked to Joe Coon the other day. You know, he uh, retired from aluminum plant manufacturing. I said, hey, uh, how do you smelt the aluminum? Because basically you got you to gotta burn it to separate, separate, uh, separate the aluminum from the basically other dirt that is not used for aluminum production. And you got to burn it, essentially, smelt it. How do you get the heat up for smelting? Uh, do you do it with solar and wind? No, you don't. Man. You do it with fossil fuels. It's just or, or nuclear. You're not going to generate the heat by solar and wind, never mind when the, when the sun's down, to get steel, to get aluminum. It's just not going to happen. Man. Anyway, so check this out. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a video that retiring in New England? Yeah, if you don't like electricity. And here's my man. He wrote on my locals channel, Eversource here in Connecticut doubled our kilowatt hour rate from 12 cents to 24 cents per kilowatt hour. Now Eversource states that we're going to get a summer rate. We've never paid a summer rate ever playing games with us, in my opinion. So check this out. My man here. So join me on locals, by the way. This guy right here, I'm sure he's a nice guy, a family man. I don't have any animosity towards this guy at all. And I get what he's doing. He says, between having solar, choosing my electric provider, having a newer home with lots of insulation and new windows and high-efficiency HVAC equipment, I managed to keep my electricity bills to a minimum. It wasn't hard to see the writing on the wall regarding energy prices, and I completely agree with that. In fact, I did videos a few years ago. I said, invest in solar, rooftop photovoltaic, as one of the best ways to beat the energy, the electricity inflation that's coming, 100%. Now I run my house for about 1.8 thousand a year, uh, 1,800 a year in electric, which includes a 10-year loan. Okay, and I said, I said, you do realize you're still on the grid, right? And the reason I say that is because I, I have a sneaky suspicion a lot of people who have solar think the grid is not applicable to them. 
when the grid goes down, it's going down to you as well, right? And again, no animosity, no hostility towards this guy at all. None whatsoever. The problem is you're still grid tied. When the grid goes down, all the soul in the world doesn't do crap for you. You know why? Because they got to get the lineman out there to freaking fix wherever the grid problem is. And the linemen have, are going to make sure you turn off your uh, electricity generation so they don't get zapped. And your doggone better do that. Now, there's things called transfer switches. 100%. You should get one. Okay, but now we're at nighttime. What do you do for there? What do you do for there? You're still on the grid. You have battery backs? I bet you don't. Because batteries are freaking expensive. And on top of that, if the grid goes down for a significant amount of time, and we're talking days on end, your battery is going to have to be replenished. How do your batteries get replenished when you're using, if it, with a transfer switch, when you're using your solar to run your home electricity? How do your batteries get replenished? Because uh, the electricity you're, you're generating from the, the sun is being not going to the batteries, it's going to the consumption right now. You're still on a grid. You're still going to be subject to irreliability of the grid. And I, I just don't think people get this, man. This guy seems to know. I've had other guys that got sold, rooftop solar and they think they're off grid. But no, 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 no. You're still attack, a tie. And just because you have solar, it doesn't mean crap when the grid goes down if it's nighttime. And you can have a big battery bank. That's fine. That's not going to solve the issue. I'm just telling you right now. Because when this happens, intermittent relying, or intermittent brownouts and blackouts, rationing, you're going to use whatever battery power you have to freaking run your house, which means your batteries are draining, which means you're not using the sun in, in order to reinvigorate your battery storage and the battery storage just doesn't last long and this is what's coming man all the solar in the world isn't going to power us it's just not now again should you get rooftop photovoltaic 100 absolutely if you can afford it should you get it without batteries no i got no qualm with that i think you'll make a mistake i would if you're going to do it you might as well invest in some batteries too but you think that's going to stop what's what's happening the electricity just doesn't come from the sun. It's not enough to power, dude. It's just not. Especially without adequate batteries. It's just not there. It's a standard of life reduction we're going to contend with. It's not just your ability to power your air conditioning. It's your, your businesses. You're going to go to those businesses. They're going to power their air conditioning. You know? Are they going to have freaking stuff under the lights? No. Did you hear what I just said about Texas? They lean on businesses to reduce consumption. What does that mean exactly? Do you not see what's happening? The quality of life is going to shrink because our, abundant, our access to cheap, abundant electricity, cheap, abundant, reliable electricity is being offloaded left and right. It's not because of freaking Ukraine and Putin. It's because of us. What's the solution? I don't know. I mean, again, I, I would absolutely encourage you to get battery banks, to get some inverter generators, get a freaking uh, uh, generator that's run on propane, with financial gas, all that stuff. Those aren't cheap, and they're only going to get more expensive as well. But even that, this is the issue, I'm, I'm just telling you, man. When when people make it harder to get fossil fuels, the price of fossil fuels are going to go up, and the scarcity is going to go up as well, which means it's going to be harder to replenish your generators if it runs on, uh, on fossil fuels. <laughs> so... All these are stop gaps, which are great. Inverter generators, I got three back there. I probably need to change the oil and all this stuff this year. I haven't done it for a while. That's not enough. Not enough, man, for our growing economy. I'm just here to warn you. Get prepared and freaking vote these suckers out who believe in this crap. Because it's evil. Think about it. Man. I was talking to my man up in uh, Skip Ritchie in Zimbabwe the other day. They're in the Harar, which is the capital of Zimbabwe, on a generator. Because there's not electricity generation to provide them electricity. And they're in the capital of the country, for heaven's sake. <laughs> and yet, you think freaking full voltaic is it's just this insanity. Man. Anyway, so be prepared. Get yourself some fans. All right? Make sure you have fans because fans are wonderful. You know, fans move air. It cools you down while you're in the place. You want to turn your fans off. You know, that's a fact. Turn your electricity off. Don't use solar or battery packs to freaking to heat things with it. That's a complete waste. You know what I'm saying? Get yourself an ice box. Get yourself some insulators to put over the ice box when electricity goes out. Don't open it up. You know, leave it in there. Get yourself some ice cubes in there to keep your freaking stuff cold in the summertime. 
Don't open it up until you absolutely need something because then you're letting all the cold air out and a lot of heat air coming in. Don't do that. So you get some blankets, some insulation blankets to keep it cool. That's what you got to do, man. But you got to get an ice box. You just got to get prepared. A million different things to do. But ignorance is not bliss here. All right. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.